All right. So a uh, live workshop with Faina Schultz, how to build applications using a truffle. Faina, it's all yours now. Okay, great. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Faina. Uh, I'm going to share my screen now so that you can see my presentation that I've set up for you. Uh, that's just my terminal. Hang on. Okay, uh, so this workshop is focused on the Truffle framework and your decentralized application if you're planning to build one. Uh, so I am just going to dive right in our agenda today. I'm going to talk about the building blocks, uh, basically the prerequisites for what you need to know in order to get started with Truffle. And then I'm going to dive into Truffle itself and how it works and how you can spin up a decentralized application very quickly. Uh, and then I will do a short demo using a Truffle box, which is a streamlined way to build a decentralized application using Truffle. And I'll dive a little bit into the code and show you how the pieces work uh, and uh, go from there. And then I will do my best to leave as much time as I can for questions at the end. So if you have a question as I'm going, just uh, type it into the chat and I will read them uh, once I'm at that point. Okay, let's get started. Um, so, okay, so building blocks. Uh, in this section, I wanna talk about the prerequisites for building a Truffle-based decentralized application. Um, so while Truffle exists to support and streamline the building of dApps, you still need to understand its place in the technological ecosystem. So that's kind of where we have to start. Uh, if this is repetitive as far as people having a lot of experience in this ecosystem already, my apologies. I just want to make sure that the level is set and that we are all starting from the same page. Uh, so uh, let's talk about what is a dApp. Uh, so a dApp is at the most basic level a decentralized application. Some people believe that dApps have to be stored on a public and decentralized blockchain. Uh, certainly the creators of Bitcoin and Ethereum and numerous other blockchains thought that these were prerequisites. Uh, mostly it is. I mean, some part of your application should be decentralized if you're calling it a decentralized application. Uh, as the field has grown, experimentation with the different protocols underlying blockchain technology and decentralized applications in general has been inevitable. Uh, so a dApp could be stored, for instance, on a private or permission blockchain. It may be decentralized, but may not be public. Uh, or most of the dApps data might not be stored on a public decentralized blockchain, but some important part of it may be. Uh, so when you're considering how to architect your own decentralized application or dApp, uh, consider the use cases that you envision uh, when deciding just how decentralized and just how public your application, your project needs to be. Uh, one example that I use really often is medical information, a dApp that in some way uses medical information could be really useful and could be really great for this ecosystem, but it's probably going to need to be permissioned. We don't want everyone to be able to read everybody's medical information. It's just one example. Uh, so let's talk also about Web3, uh, just really briefly. It's an Ethereum JavaScript API. It connects to the Ethereum blockchain and it has a, a number of essential methods uh, that you need for deploying and interacting with your smart contracts. Um, I won't have time to go into the specifics of how Web3 works, uh, but we will see it in the wild uh, when I do my demo in a little while. Uh, I'll point out where it is in the code and sort of how it's used, uh, but it is a way to interact with the, the Ethereum blockchain. Okay, so let's talk about, I think I skipped one. Okay. So accessing a decentralized application. Uh, to access what's commonly considered a public facing decentralized application, you will need either a DAP browser, which most people don't commonly have. Uh, Opera is one and I believe Brave comes with an Ethereum wallet. Also, I think MetaMask installed. Uh, most people that I know use Chrome and they use the MetaMask extension 
instead. So they'll link the MetaMask wallet, which we'll talk about in a second, to the browser in order for to turn that browser into a wallet aware browser. So uh, the goal really at this point uh, is that a user would be able to go to your website, to your DAP using Chrome, let's say, and with the MetaMask extension, they should be able to interact with your smart contracts and with your decentralized application. So uh, just a quick uh, talk about MetaMask. So MetaMask is probably the most commonly used Ethereum wallet. Uh, for interacting with decentralized applications. In order to install it, you will want to go to metamask.io uh, and create a password. And you're also going to want to note the seed phrase or the mnemonic uh, that gets spit back to you after you create your account. Uh, don't save that on your computer. Don't take a picture and save it on your phone, especially if you're putting real money into it. It's one thing if you're if it's just for testing and you have a different account with your real money, but just Quick plug for security, make sure that that's something that you actually write down and save um, somewhere secure and preferably offline if you're going to be putting real Ethereum in there. Um, you may not be doing that. Uh, you may be using test ether to start. Uh, one way to do that is to select the Robson network in MetaMask and we'll be playing around with MetaMask in a few minutes uh, when I do the demo. So. Uh, if some of this seems uh, out there, you'll see it's it's pretty easy to use, um, but you'll want to go to a faucet if you're going to use Robston. So one faucet that you can use is the MetaMask faucet at faucet.metamask.io uh, and you'll request Ether from that faucet and then it should reflect in your balance if you're using the Robston network. Um, on MetaMask. So that all sounds a little complicated because it can be for beginning users. Um, there are other ways to uh, use MetaMask for testing. The two that I use the most are Ganache CLI, which is a command line tool uh, that spins up a test blockchain. Uh, and then you can link that to your MetaMask account. The other way is to use Truffle Develop, which spins up a blockchain inside of your console. Uh, so those are the two ways and in the demo that we go over today, I'll be using Ganache CLI. Uh, I do want to talk about languages in which you can write your contract. Um, time wise, I just won't have time to go into detail about the different languages that are available. Uh, but the idea is any language that you use to write a contract is going to compile down into bytecode uh, for the Ethereum virtual machine to read. Technically, the machine reads opcode, but uh, either way, it compiles. <laughs> and um, you know, for the sake of brevity, I'll say that Solidity is the current, the like, primary language that most people use to write contracts. There are a couple of others that uh, are gaining popularity, like Viper. Uh, we do support uh, some some Viper code in Truffle. So that is something that you could do. I would say that's an advanced feature and that if you're starting out with Truffle and starting out with decentralized applications, I would learn Solidity first. Uh, because it is more popular, there's more support online, there's more of a community, there are more people that you can ask questions of. So I recommend starting out with Solidity. There are some pretty great tutorial videos on YouTube and some fun uh, ways to learn it. Uh, you can check out CryptoZombies.io, which is a fun way to learn a little bit of Solidity. Uh, and Block Geeks, which is a website, uh, has a few articles about your different options as far as which language you want to write your, your contracts in. And a quick plug for testing. Testing is important, especially in the context of a blockchain development. Once you deploy your contract to the mainnet, it's at this point, at least through Truffle, you can't really make changes to it once that happens. Uh, so you want to make sure that your contract does what you expect it to do. Uh, so right now we support uh, test files with a number of different extensions. Uh, most popular is probably .js and .sol, which is the Solidity extension. Uh, you can also write your tests in TypeScript. I've been using TypeScript lately. It's, it's pretty good. Uh, and our Truffle comes with Mocha and Chai built in. Mocha is a testing framework and Chai is an assertion library. So they're pretty easy to use. I posted the website for Mocha uh, in the slide just to get some documentation, but it's pretty straightforward. Uh, in order to run your test from your project, you'll run Truffle test 
If you just want to run a test on a specific file, then you would just append that file to that command. Okay, so the ma three main parts of the truffle suite uh, are truffle, ganache, and drizzle. I'm just going to quickly go over what those are and then focus my attention on truffle, which is what we'll be talking about for the rest of this workshop. Uh, so Ganache's UI um, is, and its command line interface are both a way to spin up a blockchain to use in testing. Uh, and then Drizzle provides a collection of front end libraries that make writing DAP user interfaces better. So Drizzle is really where you would go for any tools uh, to make the front end of your DAP look better and work better. Uh, and also there are some great utilities as far as uh, displaying data about the contracts that you're deploying. Uh, so I won't be focusing on Drizzle today, but it's definitely worth looking into. And there is a Drizzle React box uh, that there's a tutorial for in our documentation. So I highly recommend taking a look at it. You'll see the demo that we do today. Uh, the front end is lacking. <laughs> That's not what I'm focusing on today, but it's definitely worth looking into, especially if you're looking to build a DAP that's production ready that you want regular users to interact with. Um, so Truffle is the actual framework uh, for developing Ethereum based contracts and it's the focus of our workshop today. So I just want to, as an aside, talk about before Truffle. So before we had this framework, uh, you could still build a DAP. Ethereum existed before Truffle, uh, but in order to do it, you had to use a hodgepodge of tools. So you would need to run GEF locally, which would let you run a test blockchain. You would write your Solidity contracts and then manually compile them using a Solidity compiler. Uh, then you would get the ABI and the bytecode, which is the data about your contracts that comes from a compilation and you would save those as variables. Then you had to manually create a contract instance and deploy your contract. Uh, and then the binaries of that would have to be saved and linked to the API in order to interact with the contract. If that sounds really complicated, that's because it really was. Uh, it was really hard to do. Um, you, you could still build a DAP, it's doable, uh, but really it was impractical for any complex decentralized applications. And so that's why Truffle was born. <laughs> um, so the core of Truffle is this piece that we're talking about today. Um, it's an open source tool. It's where you write your contracts. It's where you do your migrations. Um, consider it your home base, if you will. Uh, this is where you start. Uh, so with that, uh, this is how you actually get started with Truffle. So let me just go over these steps really quickly uh, and then we'll dive deeper. Uh, so first you want to make sure that you have Node uh, installed, which probably I'd say 90% of you do if you do any development in JavaScript. You probably already have Node installed. I suggest using Node Version Manager uh, just to be sure that you can easily switch between versions of Node if necessary. Um, that would be if for some reason you need a different version because of a package or what have you. Uh, it just to me, that's an easier way uh, to install Node and to switch uh, between different versions. Um, I would install Truffle globally. Uh, so the command is npm install dash g truffle uh, and then create and enter your project directory. Uh, so I'm sure you all know how to do that. You make a directory and then you cd into it. Um, and then, then the magic starts. Um, you run truffle init to initialize your project directory. Uh, and then you get this file structure. Uh, so your project will have uh, several directories automatically created when you run truffle init, as well as a config file. So I'm just going to quickly talk about what these directories are. The contracts directory uh, contains the solidity code for the smart contracts that make up your DAP. So what that means is that this is where you're going to put the actual logic for how you want your code to interact with the Ethereum virtual machine. This is where you would put your Solidity smart contracts. Um, to clarify what a contract is for those who are newer to DAP development, um, basically the definition is that it's a transactional program which is run and validated by the Ethereum network. So in Solidity, you would write a contract uh, that might have getters and setters, etc. 
uh, to interact with the Ethereum virtual machine. So once your contracts are written, you're going to compile them and that produces something called an ABI. An ABI is an application binary interface. It's an abstraction. Um, oh, sorry. It's an abstraction um, which lets contracts that are written in different EVM compatible languages interact with each other. So it's kind of a middleman to make sure that if you had a contract uh, written in Viper and a contract written in Solidity, that those contracts, once compiled, could interact with one another. So it's, it's a pretty cool feature of um, smart contracts. The migrations directory uh, contains your migration files, which are JavaScript files that help you deploy contracts to the Ethereum network. Uh, so it's basically a set of deployment scripts. Uh, if you've written code before, you've either seen or operated a deployment script at some point. Uh, so it's basically the same thing. Uh, these files are responsible for staging your deployment tasks. So it is expected that you'll create new migration scripts as your project changes and grows into its final project product. Uh, so there's a few things to note here. A migration file name starts with a number and then has its description. So in the example here for underscore example underscore migration, um, this is telling us this is the fourth migration in the file or in the directory. And it, I believe, would be the fourth to get migrated when you run truffle migrate, if you run it for the first time, um, which I'll get to in a second. Uh, Artifacts.require is something that you're going to need to include at the beginning of each of these files. This is how you require in your contracts in the migrations. So if you don't do that, uh, you'll get an error saying bank cannot be found or whatever, whatever contract it is that you're trying to deploy, it's going to tell you it can't find it unless you require it in. Uh, and all migrations also have to export a function via module exports. And we will see that in the code for the demo, so I don't want to spend too much time talking about it now. Uh, but the idea is that, you, I mean, if you've written anything in Node, you will have probably used module export syntax before. It's the same idea, you're exporting your migration uh, as a script. And um, if you have run a migration previously in this project that you're working on, it's not going to, re Truffle will not re-migrate your files unless you tell it to. Uh, so I just wanted to share this. This was something that I struggled with when I was learning Truffle because I couldn't understand why it wasn't working. Um, if you make a change to a file that you've already migrated, a migration that you've already done, uh, and you want it to re-migrate that file, then you need to add dash dash reset when you run the Truffle migrate command. Um, some more about migrations. Uh, every project that you initialize with Truffle will have an initial migration um, one underscore initial underscore migration.js. Um, this is necessary so that you can use the migrations feature. Um, it goes hand in hand with a migrations contract that is also automatically included. So you don't want to touch either of those files. They're there for your benefit so that you can use the migrations. Uh, so when you run Truffle Migrate, that's going to deploy your contract. And the important part is to your chosen network. So you don't want that to get deployed to the main net right away. So you're going to want to have a development environment. You're going to want a development blockchain to test your code before you deploy to the main net. I imagine for most people, it'll take a while before your smart contracts and your decentralized application is ready to be on the main net for use. Um, one of the ways you can play around with your contracts is using Truffle Develop, like we talked about. And then, as I'll show you today, you can use Ganache CLI as well. Uh, we talked about tests, so I don't want to waste uh, too much time on this, but uh, you run your tests using Truffle Test, and there's a test directory, which is where you store all of your tests for your contracts. And last but not least, truffleconfig.js, and my apologies, that should be a underscore, <laughs> I think. Um, yeah, I think. Oh, no, no, that's right. Uh, so truffleconfig.js is your config file. Uh, it's uh, going to export an object that represents your project's configuration. So some of the things that you can add there, uh, networks, which is what we have here in the example, you might want to put a compiler with a different version than what Truffle is expecting. Uh, Soul C has a lot of versions and there are different uh, features in each and some are experimental, et cetera. So uh, once you get really deep into DAP development, you might want to specify the compiler that you want to use for that project. Uh, you also might want to specify a build directory if it's different than the uh, default 
uh, build directory that gets run in Truffle init and then uh, Truffle migrate. So those are just some examples of things that might go here. You'll find as you start developing your decentralized application that it just you'll naturally see things that you think should go there and they probably should. And that's a way for you to um, customize your decentralized application to do what you want it to do. I just wanted to post a list of key commands for you, um, which this is just very basic commands for Truffle. Uh, they basically are what they say <laughs> they are. Uh, so Truffle init will initialize a bare bone project for you, like we've talked about. Truffle unbox will also initialize a project, but it will bring you more default code depending on what you want to do. Uh, so today we'll be unboxing a React box, and so you'll get to see what that looks like. Uh, Truffle compile is how you compile your contract. So what happens there is that your contracts will get uh, built and put into the build directory that either you've specified or the default build directory. Uh, Truffle migrate will migrate your files like we talked about uh, and which means to deploy them to either your test net or the main net depending on the situation. Uh, Truffle test will test and then Truffle develop will open a console for you that you can test within. Uh, if you use Truffle develop, then go ahead and leave off the word Truffle. You can use any of the commands basically and just you can say compile, migrate, test without the word Truffle. Um, inside of that console. And there are a lot of other commands, uh, maybe not a lot, but there are a few other commands. So go ahead and read the Truffle documentation if you want to get into something that's a little bit more complex as far as the commands you can use. And I wanted to give you a list of resources as well. I know this is recorded, so um, you'll have time to go back and take a look at these. Uh, but these are some resources for getting started with Truffle. The first one, obviously, is the documentation. Uh, and then the Stack Exchange for Ethereum has a lot of discussion of different parts of Truffle and issues people have had with answers. Uh, we, the developers of Truffle, uh, are on Gitter and Spectrum. And we do uh, monitor those and try to answer questions as they come up. Uh, and also I posted our GitHub for Truffle Suite slash Truffle. Uh, if you want to contribute, we are open source. Uh, so we always welcome contributions. And that is where a lot of people will post what they think are bugs so that we can respond to those as well uh, and maintain our code. So that is a very quick overview of what Truffle is and how it works. But I think really the key here is to uh, have a demo where we can actually see it in action. And so my goal here, just uh, to be clear, uh, I'm not building the most uh, complicated DAP ever right now. Uh, what I would like to do is take about 15 minutes and show you that in those 15 minutes using Truffle's tools, I can get you to a point where you have a smart contract, a very simple one, uh, and it can interact with the front end. And so you have a working DAP that you can then build on top of. So that's what I'm going to do with the next 15 minutes. Um, wish me luck. I think I can do it in 15. Uh, and then we'll do questions after that. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, so hopefully you can all see my terminal. Um, so first things first, we'll make a directory. I'm going to name it practice because we're practicing. Uh, you can name it obviously whatever you want uh, and I'm going to CD into the practice directory and that's what we're going to do uh, most of our work. Uh, so I'm going to unbox the react box. So that command literally just looks like this truffle unbox react. Uh, if you go to the truffle suite documentation, you uh, can see all the different boxes that are available. There are user generated boxes as well. Uh, there are uh, organizations that have made boxes to make it easier to use their uh, applications. So I know Open Zeppelin has a box, uh, and I think there are some others. And there is a Drizzle React box, so that's something worth looking into as well if you want a more robust front end. So I'm going to hit enter so that we can unbox this. This does take a minute. Um, it takes, I mean, literally probably an entire minute. <laughs> um, when you do a truffle init, it's a lot faster because you just have three files, three directories, basically. Uh, here we're building a React app in addition. So there's a client directory that we'll see in a minute. Setting up the box. Let's all wait patiently. Um, and 
once it's done, it will give us a success message. So we'll know that everything was um, done as expected and we'll be able to take a look at everything. So here we go, um, unbox successful, sweet. Uh, you also get a little list of the commands that we just talked about and a few extras that are specific to the React box. Uh, so that's pretty helpful. Uh, so if we LS right now, we can see sort of, this is what I talked about as far as the anatomy of the Truffle DAP. It mostly looks the same. Uh, notice that we have a client directory. That's not something that we had uh, in my presentation. That's because we have a front end app here. So the client is the front end um, that we're going to be using. So we'll, we'll get into that. Um, let me open this so we can all see it. I'm using Sublime. Um, you don't have to, sorry, that's uh, from earlier when I was practicing. Uh, so I'm using Sublime because I like it, I'm used to it, so it's uh, what I do, but you can definitely use other um, IDEs. Just look for one that has Solidity support. Most of them have JavaScript support, so um, I have used Atom a few times for this, and it's great, So and that's open source. Uh, so here, uh, let's just quickly talk about what we're seeing. So the contracts directory has a migrations directory, which uh, the migrations file, which we've talked about. Uh, we don't want to touch this. The simple storage. So this is just a simple contract. It's what we're going to be playing with because um, it's outside of the scope of this presentation to really jump into solidity. So we're just going to play around with this very simple contract. It has a setter and a getter. It basically sets a number and stores it and then you get that number from storage. And that's all that's happening here. In migrations, we have the initial migration, which I've already talked about. And then we also have, this comes automatic with the React box. I didn't write this. Uh, we have a deploy contract migration. So all this does is require uh, simple storage. And I'm gonna change this to let because it really bothers me. Uh, so we have, we require simple storage and then we deploy it. Uh, so that's all that's happening here, but none of this has happened yet. So it's just the, the code. We have the Truffle config as well. Uh, like I mentioned, because we're using React, uh, we're actually putting our build directory in the client instead of having a build folder. And the reason for that is that we want uh, the client to be able to access the build files so that we can interact with our DAP from the front end. So this is automatically included in the React box as well, which is really helpful, but it's also really good to know why that's there. Now, something I'm going to add here is the network information. And I'm adding this uh, for our development network so that we can use Ganache. So Ganache's port is 8545 and we'll be using localhost as well. So that's all this really says. Um, network ID being all just means it's going to match any network. Uh, this can be changed when you get into, um, when you get further into development. Uh, and I think the WebSockets true is due to the Web3, is due to Web3 um, interacting with this, I think. And so uh, there you have it. That's kind of the bare bones of your Truffle React um, app, but we haven't done anything yet. So let's start with Truffle compile, which should succeed unless I miss some steps. So this is going to compile our contracts and put them in the client build client contracts directory. Great, uh, compiled successfully, and it does tell you which compiler you're using, which may not matter too much right now. But if you start uh, messing around with that, you'll want to know that it compiled with the correct compiler that has the features that you want. So now if we look into client uh, source contracts, now we see we have a migrations JSON file and a simple storage JSON file. These are considered artifacts. So this is information about your contract. This has the ABI, which will give you the interfaces for the different functions that you might be using, as well as the bytecode for your contract, the deployed bytecode. Um, there's a lot of information here. I won't have time to get into all of it, but uh, the gist is that this is, and this will also give you the network once it's deployed, which it's not yet. Uh, the gist is that this is the basically the primary source of truth for your contract. This is going to tell you everything about your contract when it was compiled. Uh, now we want to migrate. Um, and let me check something. Okay, so this should not work. And I just, just want to show you what it'll look like when you don't have a blockchain uh, spun up yet. So you, I'm going to get an error. Uh, connection not open on send, connection not open. 
Uh, so that is because I don't have a connection. That's pretty straightforward. Uh, so what I want to do is run Ganache CLI. If you don't have Ganache yet, uh, you will need to install it. So you're either going to want to um, install it via Node or via Yarn if you have that. Install it globally so that you can use it across your projects. And just make sure you always have the newest version. So the command is just ganache, ganache CLI. And what we're seeing here, I just want to quickly explain. Um, these are your 10 available accounts. Your 10 available accounts on the test blockchain that we just spun up. Each of them has 100 ETH that you can play with. Uh, and then these are the private keys for each uh, of those accounts. You're going to need this private key uh, in order to uh, connect to MetaMask, which we'll do in just a minute. I'm going to copy this first private key for that purpose. And so right now, Ganache is listening. Nothing's happening. It's just listening and waiting to see uh, when something interacts with this blockchain. Okay, so we have compiled and we have migrated our project in this Truffle React box. Uh, the next thing we need to do is we need to, so I'm gonna be in practice, which is our directory. I'm gonna CD into client, which is our front end client for React. Uh, and in here, I'm gonna run npm run start. And I'm going to do that so that I can run our front end client so that we can interact with this on the front end on our Chrome browser. So let's watch that start, okay. Sorry, I'm gonna have to make this a little smaller so I can see it in my screen share. Uh, now we don't, so it, yes, yeah, so, uh, hmm. well, so a couple things. We need to set up uh, our MetaMask. So while it's, Connected to localhost 8545, these accounts are old accounts that I've had on here. So I'm going to need to import an account for the new, the new spun up ganache that I just set up. So I'm going to paste my private key here. And now I can confirm an account. Oh, okay. So this says this contract object doesn't have address set yet. Please set an address first. So let's take a look at what we missed. My guess is that there's a mismatch between where I'm running NPM. Hmm. Interesting. So I'm going to uh, stop NPM and start a new terminal just to be sure. And then TD into client and can run start. Let's see if it still has an unhandled rejection or not. All right. Oh, huh. This set state. Well, this is good. Um, let's take a moment to see what's going on here. Uh, this was working earlier today. Uh, address first. Okay, so we have the deployer that works as expected. Uh, simple storage that looks like it should. This all looks like it should. Hmm. Okay, I'll tell you what, uh, we are going to very quickly redo that to see uh, what's going on. We can leave Ganache running because Ganache isn't going to change anything. So I'm going to make a directory that is crypto chicks practice instead. Okay, so truffle in it or truffle unbox react. We'll give this a minute again. Um, so I have had this error before, so let me just talk about it. Most likely uh, one of my tabs in my terminal is in a different uh, place. Uh, it's in a different project. I was 
playing around with this earlier today, so I probably just have more than one uh, directory running. That's all that is. You probably won't ever see that because you're unlikely to initialize your project like five times in one day, the same project. Uh, so that's what the uh, weird address error is. So we'll just let that run. And we can see here um, in the meantime that Ganache is running. It's getting the balance. It's, it's getting the ETH block number. So this is all your test net. But you can see that the blockchain is running. And these are the functions that it's running. Um, OK, great. So we unbox successfully into here. Uh, I'm going to do truffle compile. Great, and then I'm going to do truffle migrate. So when I'm not talking about each step, it's actually even faster than 15 minutes. <laughs> to get to the point where we were at is more like a couple of minutes. Uh, great, so this says could not connect here. Th oh, okay, great. So I know what happened. Uh, the config file was not saved. So let's open that again. I'll show you. Uh, in Truffle config right here, we want to add our networks. So we want to make sure this is 8545, which is Ganache's network. Here it was looking for port 7545, which is the default for Truffle develop. Uh, so that being said, let's try to Truffle migrate again and make sure that it happened. Okay, great. So we successfully migrated this time. And now we're gonna CD into client again, and we're gonna do NPM run start. And it's going to run and it's going to work. Wait for it. And obviously, like once you have this running in a production environment, it will be faster. This is all, you know, using a Ganache test net, etc. Here we go. Okay, so here is our smart contract. Uh, MetaMask is going to spin up right away because I've installed it in Chrome. If you haven't, you're going to need to go to MetaMask.io and you're going to install it as a Chrome extension and set up your contract. I knew we wouldn't really have time for that today. Uh, so I set it up ahead of, well, I've had it set up because I've developed DAPs. Uh, but so here you're going to want to confirm. And so as soon as I confirmed, I don't know if you missed it, this value was zero and it got changed to five. That's, hap that's happening from my DAP. So one way that um, I can show you is if we go to, if we go to our uh, client, so in the client, while, I, while I'm here, let me just talk about app.js. Um, if you haven't worked with React before, this is basically the core of your React app, your front end app. Uh, there's a little bit of front end code that's already here if you open the React box. Obviously, you would change that to make it do what you want it to do and look how you want it to look. Uh, it's a very bare bones app right now just to be able to demonstrate uh, how this works. And so in here, this is how you would display a value from your smart contract. So it's looking at the state and then the variable storage value, uh, which is being set right here where we set the state. Uh, and then here is where we actually set it using, uh, this is one of the methods available in the simple storage contract. Uh, so that's where the five came from, but let's say we want it to be a thousand. I would save that here and then go back to my DAP and it restarted uh, because I made a change. I'm going to need to confirm this again. And just to clarify, this is a gas fee. It's what you pay in order to run your smart contract. Um, it's usually a pretty nominal amount, but if you start doing a lot of mathematical cal calculations inside of your contract, uh, that number will go up. So if I confirm this, now the stored value is 1,000. So I did that in my DAP. So that is us interacting with our decentralized application on the front end. It's a very, very basic example. Um, there's a lot more that you can do, obviously. Uh, for instance, if I wanted to add a new contract here, I would, let's say, simple, this. 
I'm running out of time, so I'm just going to very quickly show you this piece and then we'll get to questions. Um, so Simple Bank, let's say, and this is actually a um, Solidity contract that I learned with. Um, it's nothing particularly special, uh, but it's just to show you that, um, so this is how I would add a contract. Uh, but now, uh, two things here, I can compile it. But there are some tricks to how best to migrate that contract. Uh, for instance, if you don't have anything specifically different other than deploying the contract, let's say it's another very simple contract and you just want to link it with the previous one. Maybe I want my simple storage contract linked with my simple bank contract so I can store numbers and then use them in my bank contract. Uh, in the migrations, uh, I think this is something that uh, people tend to want to just add more migrations files. And so something that I would recommend it, uh, I like to keep things organized in a different way. So I would do something like this. I'm just going to copy it over to save time. Uh, so I would use a deployer and I would deploy the first contract. This is basically what was already there. And then, um, so I'm using lambdas here. If you're not familiar with that, that's a somewhat newer JavaScript thing. Uh, and so I'm using then here. And then I'm linking simple storage and bank. This links the two contracts together. And then I'm deploying bank. This should mean that I can use both the simple storage and the bank methods in my, uh, in my app. Uh, so I'm not going to have time to make all the changes here that I would have wanted to to sort of show you how that piece would work. But suffice it to say that here we're making an instance of the simple storage contract. Uh, and then inside this function, this all comes preloaded. So it's a really great way if you haven't written a DAP before to get a sense for how the pieces work, because then you can start switching it out, start using methods from another contract um, and sort of see how everything works. Uh, so I would probably add some more methods in here and return some of those variables, you know, and change my entire DAP to use the bank contract as well. Uh, that's probably an oversimplified version of what I would do. But one thing we can do now to make sure that this still works as we expect. So I just added a, oh, I haven't migrated it yet. Let me do a truffle migrate to make sure that this won't work. Don't forget uh, to make, to require to require anything new. So if I'm adding a new contract here, I need to require it using artifacts.require. Okay, so now it's required. And so now when I run Truffle Migrate, this should work. And so it didn't need to compile because I had already compiled. Oh, and it's not gonna migrate. So like I said before, you have to use dash dash reset. So if you use my method of maintaining the two deployment or the two migration files and not creating a third one for your third contract, uh, then you're going to need to use dash dash reset when you make changes to a file that's been migrated in the past. Um, if you have questions about that, feel free to chat it in and I'll, I'll answer them. Uh, but so I'm doing truffle migrate dash dash reset in order to re-migrate everything. Uh, and part of, ah, uh, yes, well, I can spell, I swear. Uh, so let's try that one more time. Okay, great. So now we see here we've replaced simple storage with the new newly deployed version of simple storage because it had been deployed before. And now we're deploying simple bank for the first time. And so this is the information about that. Uh, so this gives you data about deploying your contract, the transaction hash for the deployment, the contract address, the block number, timestamp, um, you can take a look at this on your own time um, and let me know if you have any questions about it. Uh, so now we've migrated the second contract. Uh, if everything worked as it's supposed to, then this number will still change to 100. Me, yeah, or 1,000, sorry, I wrote 1,000. So that means that I didn't break anything when I added another contract. Obviously, there are additional steps here, uh, and this is kind of where you can take this and run with it. You're going to want to access the functions in whatever contract you add, uh, and uh, you'll want to learn Solidity or Viper or lower, lower level language, which is another 
gaining popularity Solid or Ethereum virtual machine language uh, in order to write your contracts. But once you do that, or if you use a library like Open Zeppelin uh, to use existing contracts, um, then you can go into app.js and make whatever changes you want uh, to that file so that this front end looks different uh, and matches what you're looking to do uh, in your decentralized application. Uh, I hope that that was at least minimally helpful. I know it's a lot of information. Uh, so uh, just, I'm gonna take a look at chat here. Uh, I can share the network setup in the chat. So the first question I see here is, could you share the network setup in the chat window? Uh, so I absolutely can. Let me uh, copy that in. So this is the network setup you're gonna wanna use. Uh, hopefully that, yeah, there we go. So I did add it in there. Uh, this is what you'll wanna use if you wanna use Ganache. Uh, the default is the Truffle Develop blockchain uh, port, which is 7545. Uh, so if you use the Truffle Develop console, that's uh, what you would use. Um, let me give you my, I know you guys are just getting started. Uh, I believe that I'm the first workshop. Uh, so you may not have actually started developing yet. Uh, so I am going to provide you with my email address with the caveat that I'm, if it's a lot of questions, I may not have time to answer. I, I do work full time. Uh, but if you're really struggling and you can't find help in the resources that I've posted, um, go ahead and send me an email and I will try to help you if I can. So I just posted that in the chat as well. Uh, for those watching the recording, it's Faina, F-A-I-N-A, at trufflesuite.com. Uh, and I don't see any other questions, so I don't know if anyone has any. That, uh, that concludes my part of the presentation. Um, <laughs> All just, right. Yeah. Thank you so much, Feina. That was yeah, very educational. Yeah, I learned a lot. <laughs> uh, yes, thank you, guys. And uh, we will have an, our next workshop. We'll have uh, on the 28th, um, May 28th, the same time at 7 p.m. Um, Toronto time. Uh, and that will be the Zeppelin Solutions. Uh, you just received an invite uh, in your email addresses, so please join us. And I would like to Thank Afeina again for this amazing workshop, and uh, we will see you all at the conference in Toronto. Thank you so much, Feina, and thank you, everybody. You're very welcome. Um, thank you guys so much. Thanks for having me. Um, I do see a question about asking if I can talk more about my background. Uh, so do you mind if I do that real quick? Or? For sure. Yes, yes, please do. Please do. Sure. Okay. Uh, so Jennifer asks, can you talk more about your background? Um, I'd be happy to. So I used to be an attorney. I graduated from Harvard Law in 2011, uh, and I did public interest law, helping people get uh, health insurance and general health care stuff taken care of from a legal perspective. Um, I felt like every day I had a new client with the same problems and I would solve their problem and the next day it was another client with the same problems. It was really frustrating to feel like law moved so slowly. Uh, so that was when I started looking toward um, technology and seeing how quickly things can change and how technology can change society. And that's how I got here. And I happily stumbled upon blockchain a couple years ago. And now I work in uh, building infrastructure for people who want to build dApps. And I'm super, super happy doing that. And it's been really fun. And uh, Ni asked whether I'll be able to share more workshops in the future. I'd be happy to. This is my first online workshop that I've done. So it was fun and I'd be happy to do it again in the future. Oh, yes. Yeah. If you if you would like to, yes, we, we can do this regularly. So, yeah, we're probably going to talk about it more. Thank cool. you so much, Feina. Uh, so, guys, if you don't have any more questions, thank you. And thank you very much, Feina, too. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, thank Bye. you, everyone. Bye. Bye.